Is it worth trying to salvage this? Right then, this is a, some lime. Um, I got a bit of it from a tree that had been on the ground a few years. Right, and as you can see, it's punky as hell there. It's got cracks all over it. It's punky there as well. Um, sometimes you get wood like this. And an awful lot of people go, oh, that's too bad to use and they throw it away. Right. Wood like this can actually be the prettiest because that kind of the beginnings of rot brings its own colours with it. Uh, lime is lovely wood to work anyway. Uh, this one weighs practically nothing. Right. Uh, what I'll do at the end is I'll see if I can write this scales over there. I'll put it on the scales and show you how much this actually weighs when I finished it. Uh, I'll show you a few tricks for working wood like this that is like that punky and you tear out like that in it. Uh, but in the end, you'll end up with a free ball. Right now, I was going to do this with another piece, which is which was this piece, which was even prettier. Right, it's lime again. But this one is too far gone. Why did I say it was too far gone? Right. I put it on the chuck and the tenon just snapped clean off. The wood itself is still pretty solid, but if it's not solid enough to hold on a tenon, that the tenon actually stays solid, it's dangerous to work, so don't do it. Right. Now, I suppose I could put that in a glue block and stuff, but I wouldn't be too happy with doing it. Right. If a piece of wood is too dangerous to work, then it's too dangerous to work. Right, so we get on with this. Right, now I did this, rough turned it and put it in the kiln. Uh, and it's been sitting on a shelf here for ages actually. And I'm another, there's another few pieces of it over there. Uh, so we get working with this now. Right, uh, so first thing I gotta do is, as normal, is flatten it off and get the outside running through again. Uh, then we'll get on to stuff you can do to help that kind of stuff. Right, so we'll get on with it. Right. Going up to 800, just to flatten off the edges here. help yourself a lot with stuff like this by having your tools really really sharp now normally if I'm doing these you'll see me cut that way right the wrong direction to get uh, to get this round because it's easier with this one I'm gonna do all the cuts that way because with that if I cut the wrong way it's just gonna rip out right. with good solid wood you can cut the wrong direction to start with. Right. Check on one. Right. But when it's like this, always cut the right, always cut the correct direction. But I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to get that rim running through. There's going to be no big cuts, they're all going to be small. Let's have a look at that. Right, 
see the big cracks in it. Right. And the punkiness is actually cutting quite nicely. What I've done with this first, before I even started cutting this, right, after it came out of the kiln, I soaked it in this in sanding sealer, right? It helps the punky areas, right? Now those cracks are pretty big, but yet again, as I said, I'm not too worried about it because uh, the whole thing of this is, can you salvage a blank like this? And the answer is yes, you can. There's just a few things to do with it, right? Now, am I getting a cut all the way around? I'm not getting a cut just there yet, so that's not ready to go yet. Right. What I want to do is get this outside rounded, then I'll tackle those cracks. Just about there. cuts here because I don't want to do too big of a cut on that punky stuff. See the way it's still ripping out there and there. Now I'm going to go to a pull cut because I can't push from there. All right, so hand well down. I'm not doing a side bevel cut here. I'm also not scraping, I'm cutting. The one thing you must avoid doing on wood like this is scraping it. Now, before I even attempt to get a finished cut on that, I'm going to treat those cracks. Right. And what I'm going to use is uh, coffee grounds and CA, thin CA. the coffee grounds well in there first coffee grounds work well because they break down to dust right, i've got these off uh, one of the guys that has been at the markets i do he's a coffee seller and i got his used coffee grounds off him See, I'm really rubbing these well in. The odds are I might have to do this again in case they don't completely fill. And then thin C8 and the coffee grounds will just drink them in. See it there? It just drinks it in. I'll flip it over and do the exact same on the other side. Now, if you don't have coffee grounds, you can do this with uh, sawdust. Now, I'm talking sawdust not shavings from the lead. Uh, shavings from the lead are fine if you've solid wood and big cracks and stuff in it. But wood like this you need to go down in deep. Right. 
and I'm not worried about uh, the wood stain from the CA because there's going to be a lot of marks on this wood anyway. Right, if you do want to do this and you don't want the wood staining, just put a layer of uh, sanding sealer on it first. That'll stop it. Now, as I said, the odds are I'm going to have to do that again. Now, give that a few seconds. And then, I'll get a finish cut on there. Right? Now, where's the punky parts? Right. The punky parts are nearly gone. Now, the reason they're nearly gone is because I put that sanding sailor on it. If you get really bad stuff, there's uh, wood hardeners you can get. They work fine. But most of us have sanding sailor there. So, uh, it... Just so you know, it can be used. Right. Right now, we've got the finish cut on this. I'm at the speeding up to... 950 is what I'm aiming for. Close enough. Right. I'm going to get the finish cut on this. side bevel coat here. Right. As I said, one of the most important things when you're uh, using wood like this is do not scrape it. Or try and avoid scraping it anyway. So I'm going to use a slow bevel cut here. Just get a finished cut onto it. Just checking those cracks as I'm going. Yeah, they look like they're filling. And the filling is staying in anyway. Keep stopping and checking this just to be sure. Now, there is not rounded yet, so I'm actually gonna have to do a pull cut there. Right, so, I might have to do this again as a side bevel cut will not take down that much stuff. So, I can pull cut. See that section just there? That's what I've got to get down. it just there in that blank. I gotta get down. Do 
on now if you're scraping or cutting what you're looking for is shavings not sawdust right, just about there right i'm gonna have to fill that big crack again right so i'll do that again i'll be back in a sec all right then we got those cracks filled again and we'll do a side bevel cut again now to get a finish cut on them doing with the side bevel cut is taking that extra uh, coffee ground off extra coffee ground off and those cracks are still sealed now what I'm gonna do now is a bit weird right before I even start sanding this I'm gonna soak this in sanding sealer because that punky area just there it's not too bad it's not bad now at all but I want that as stiff as I can get it so I'm gonna soak it in sanding sealer before I even start sanding right? and when I say soak it I mean I'm really gonna soak it in it This is going to absolutely drink sanding sailor. See, all that sanding sailor is now gone. And you've seen how much I put on that. But that's the punky area there. Right. But as you can see, it also has the prettiest colours. There, where it's not punky, it spreads nicely. But as soon as I hit the other side of that punky area, and you'll normally find that the punky area is at the is at the end ground. As I said, normally you'd only put sanding sailor on. Uh, like before the oxygen grit and the oxygen grit will do a wonderful job on this actually to finish it off but I'm going to put sanding sealer on it to stiffen up those fibres before I start sanding at all right, right. right. so they're having a good soak with sanding sealer right. so I'll let that go off and I'll uh, start sanding it yeah, something I mentioned a while ago was that, uh, well, I actually asked it on social media and I asked it here in the, um, uh, the community section, was for some reason now, my previous life, I was a firefighter and part of our training was, uh, I'm an advanced chainsaw operator. 
and something I asked was, would it be interested? Would I? Would people be interested in me going through the saws that we use in wood turning? And the answer was an overwhelming yes. Now my own chainsaw has died. Well, it actually hasn't died, but something happened to it, which uh, means I won't use it. And I'll show you that. Not this one, next video. Right, but I've ordered a new chainsaw. And I figured that that would be the perfect time to do it. So either next week or the week after, the video is going to be on saws that we use in wood turning. And I'm especially going to go harp on the chainsaw. And you will hear the word safety a lot. Right, so I'll sand this and I'll be back in a minute. Right then, this has been sanded and I'm trying to experiment. It's something I've been meaning to try for ages, right? I'm after deliberately staining a lot of the outside of this with CA before I put any sand and sealer on it. It's just an effect of, I've had in my head for ages and I just want to try it and see what happens. So I've deliberately kind of put lines of CA all over this, just to see what happens. Now the CA has gone off, so what I'll do is I'll give it one more rub of uh, 240 and 320. And then I'll go through my normal finishing routine, which those who haven't seen it, I'll stick a link up there. And basically what my normal finishing routine is, is shellac based sanding sealer Yorkshire grit one of the best things you can actually get right uh i'm just seeing the last finishing works uh as i said it's a finishing routine I've, I've used for years and i've never had a problem with it but uh, as i said this was something i just wanted to i've been meaning to try it for ages and uh, I know it works well with pumpy wood because the CA soaks into it. It's just something I noticed. And I said, I must, I said to myself, I must try that as a finish. And see what happens. And I'm just taking the, any bore and raise off with the CA. Slip bit of sanding, right? And we'll see if that makes an interesting finish or not. It's a bit of an experiment. Why not? Right. So now I'm going to uh, put the sanding sealer on, then the Yorkshire grit, then the Hampshire sheen glass finishing works. And we'll be back then. Right, and we're back. Just buffing the wax off. Uh, I'm not too sure about this experiment of the uh, of the CA running all over, can't put extra marks in it. I don't know whether I like it or not. I suppose if you're, if you're artistic a bit, which I'm not, and you do patterns on it, but I said I'm not 100% sure, I don't think I like it actually. Well, it was worth an experiment anyway. Right. Now we're going to go on the inside of this. Right. Not a sign of that punkiness left at all. Right, now we're going on the inside of this. So we'll just switch the camera and we're going to go on the inside. So back in a sec. Right then, as you can see, we have funky there and we have funky there so, yeah. right so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this down slightly first then I'm gonna soak it in sanding sealer and then cut it again and so we get on with that
I then I've reduced it down and now I'm going to soak it in sanding sealer to stiffen up those fibres right, I'll treat that little crack there that one there and then we get a finish cut on it so that it's going to be exactly the same as the outside so we'll do that and we'll be back in a sec right then it feels like it's gone dry should have stepped that up nicely right i freshly sharpened the ball gouge and now i'm gonna start cutting get the finished cutting working nicely. Now before I go any further I want to trim that rim. Flatten the rim off. Crack is filled. Crack is filled. Crack is filled. Okay. And now we're going to go back to getting the finish cut done on the inside of this. there but sandy will take that out but the stiffening worked nicely right let's sand that and finish it and i'll be back in a sec right then that's it after sanding and you can see all the punkiness is gone and the sharp tools and Doing it with sanding sealer before you do that last cut really does help. If that one doesn't work, there's another method called slurrying, and I'll show that in another video. Uh, because this one worked just nicely, right? So I'll uh, finish the inside of this, and then I'll be back. So see you in a minute. All right, I'm just polishing the wax off. turned out pretty nice so it's one of those things that um, an awful lot of people would just send a piece of wood bend up punky and just thrown it out going into the firewood pile but you can get some really pretty stuff if you just know how to handle it right and the trick as I said is really sharp tools and uh, before you do your final cut, soak it in sanding sealer, right? If you don't have one of the wood hardeners. Right, there we have a very, very pretty bow. Right, so I'll flip it over, uh, take the base off. You've seen me do it loads of times, so I'm not gonna bother filming that bit. And uh, I'll give you a closer look at it. So, back in a minute. There we have a pretty little line bow made out of some very very punky wood that probably would have ended up in the born pile all right that was just that video was just to show that um if you get a piece and you don't happen to have the uh wood hardener that you can use sanding sealer to stiffen wood up now as i said these these bowls are always the same they're very light and that one weighs 440 grams 
for a ball that size that is that's nothing weight wise so i'll put up a few cells at the end and if you enjoyed that one i got out out of it if you wouldn't mind click a like that'd be great and i'll uh, see you in the next one